Besides being a lot of fun, developing a style of drawing where we can capture a scene relatively quickly is an incredibly useful and I think very helpful thing to do in skill development as well. But the real challenge comes when we draw quickly, when we have scenes or we have parts of a scene that are very complex. How do we capture that complexity, but not to lose the brisk drawing style that we're using in the rest of our drawing? I want to demonstrate the way I do this with this rather ornate drinking fountain in the heart of Sydney. So I start drawing the way I normally do, which is I find an element of the subject, which I think I can capture the perspective of the, the proportions of the position of more accurately than other parts. And then I branch out from there. Now it looks like I'm drawing this at an angle, but if you look, you'll notice that my photo is at an angle. In fact, the camera's been nudged and it's tilted. It doesn't slope to the left in real life. And so what I'm doing is my normal trick where I choose a part of the scene, and in this case it's this cluster of columns that are slightly closer to us on the left than the right hand ones, and I draw them a little more slowly, also because they're the first thing I draw, and also because that establishes an easier place for the brain of the observer to focus and just to capture a sense of the detail, which is important then for giving the impression of that same sort of detail elsewhere when we actually don't draw it quite as detailed. And now I decide the easiest way to quickly draw this rather complex structure and also take into account the angle we're viewing it from is by moving across horizontally and just establishing the widths of the various components I have. And then I look at where the top of the arch is going to be compared with the column that I've first drawn, because that will determine how high I take that center fountain section. Now notice with that center fountain section, I have greatly reduced the detail that's there. But I've still tried to indicate something of each of the various elements of detail, but in a simplified way. And then I join up this arch and start to do a little work on the entablature on top of the columns in the arch. And now I'm trying to work out exactly where to put these right hand columns. And for a second, I think I'm positioning the corner column and I realize then that the column that we see first is actually half obscured. So fortunately I catch that before I commit to it. And of course, aligning the detail we do with detail which aligns horizontally in the reference is really important. So where this decoration comes down the column, I need to align that horizontally just as much as I need to align the fluting that's just on the lower sections of the column. Now I'm quite reasonably happy with the proportions of this, if you like, center sort of more box-like section. And now I realize, of course, that I haven't drawn this final column that we can see of the left-hand side. And, and now it's getting quicker and quicker to add this column and the detail because I've drawn this element a number of times now. And so this lets us pick up the pace a little bit and if these sections are further away, then that's also good because a brisker style, perhaps a looser style with slightly less detail does also create the effect of distance, even a relatively short distance such as this. So now we just have a moment to establish this, the upper part of the entablature and the base of the broken pediment that we have on top. And one of the important things to work out accurately, one of the things I slowed down for was this overhanging cornice that I'm just drawing now, where it angles 
over the corners, exactly where do the edges of it stop? How much does it overhang the entablature on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side? Whereabouts over the column that's underneath it is that corner section. And now I need to work out where the top of the pediment is. So I align it with what's underneath it in the reference. And then I check my drawing to see if I put it in that place, does that look okay? And I think, yep, yeah, I, I think that will look right. Sometimes if we've made some mistakes, putting it in exactly the right place for the reference won't look quite right in our drawing. And then sometimes we have to compromise a little bit. But I'm still trying to draw quickly. So I'm putting a little extra time into working out where the elements start and stop in relation to what else I've drawn. But I still try and draw those, those lines, the line work for those elements briskly, quickly. Now, I set myself 20 minutes to draw this. I thought a 20 minute drawing of this sort of detail would be brisk and it certainly was. You're watching this at double time. So if you want to see it at real time, you can use that cog icon that you can see on your screen somewhere to slow it down to half speed. Now, the one, the one mistake I did make on this was I drew these, I'm not sure what they are. Are they griffin type animals? Just a little bit too large. But notice how I did it, how I broke it down. I didn't try and draw an animal instead I just looked at the shapes. I looked at those legs coming down. I looked at the body, which bulged out in front, then at the neck, which arched back, and the little pointy cone head. And then I added the swept back wings. Now, I drew that first griffin too large. And then you can see I adjusted the height of the dome on top to better suit the griffin. But that was, I think, probably my most significant error that I made in this. I should have left the top of the dome section where I'd originally put my horizontal line because I think overall it would have been less of a difference with the reference by having the griffin too large than having the dome go up too high, which is what actually happens then. So when we realize that we've got something out of proportion, we have to work out how we're going to make adjustments or not. And I'd have been better off not making the adjustment I made and just keeping the size, the height of that, that dome as it is more in the reference. But the griffin is an important part to get right. I also realized after I turned the camera off that the very right side of the dome doesn't quite come out with enough fullness. And so I did adjust that in my actual drawing. And if you look at the thumbnail, you'll see that it does come out with more fullness in the thumbnail. And so now I've got the section at the base here. And really, um, this is even more gestural because it's not so central and there's not so much detail. But again, we need to make sure we line things up accurately enough. And I realized that I've actually left out this section on the left-hand side. I thought I'd almost finished, but I still had a couple of minutes out of my 20 minutes. So look, the important thing is to make sure that the main architectural elements align properly and are in the right proportion to each other and to draw as quickly as we can in doing that but with a light style and not drawing too much not committing our lines too far across the the subject at once because what we want in the end is the overall effect now of course the fact that i've taken my dome too high isn't really obvious if we're not comparing it to the reference so that's something at least. And as I said, it does look a bit better with that right hand side adjusted. So now it's just a final, well, how's it looking? And I realized that there's another griffin that we can see the back of, part of, that was a bit obscured by the foliage further back. So I add him. And I think that's about it. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. 
Well, what do you think? Are you game to have a go at trying to draw this in 20 minutes or 30 minutes? But it's a good subject, I think, to take up the challenge of drawing briskly a fairly detailed, a fairly complex subject. Because what we need to do is to create the effect of the detail, not draw all of the detail, not get bogged down in the detail, which also slows down our line work and can start to give our drawing a bit of a plodding overall look. So why not get this photo from my channel community page and give it a go. But look, whatever you draw and however you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.